In this module, we will learn how to do additional scripting within SSIS. The whole point of SSIS, or SQL Server Integration Services, is to bring in data from a third-party source, transform it, and then load it into a destination. What we can do within scripting in SSIS is also extend the original functionality. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go into a pre-configured Visual Studio project. So I've already opened this guy up. Let me come over here and just double click. Now, the way that you could have done this is I could have also gone under File, and then Open, and then brought in a project and solution. But in this particular case, I already had a demo established. Now, what we have here in this particular demonstration is that we have a control flow task, which is actually calling a data flow task. And within that control flow, that data flow task is calling a script task. Now, we need to totally understand here that pretty much anything that we can do within normal SSIS programming, we can also script it accordingly. But in order to start for this, if we look on the control flow side, I'm going to come over here on our SSIS toolbox, and then I'm just going to go ahead and look at this script task. And all we've really done here is just drug this script task in here and then given it a name. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that specific task. And then we can come over here and we can take a look at this data flow task. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click on this data flow task, which is going to take me to the data flow design pane. Now within the data flow design pane, we have a series of additional tasks. We have a script source. Now if I just go ahead and double click on my script source, we can see that that specific source has inputs and outputs. In this particular case, I have a series of output columns. I have column one and I have column two. And if I look at column one, I can see that column one is a data type of a four byte signed integer. And if I look at column two, I can see that column two is a data type of a string. Now I'm going to go ahead and click over here to the script. And then if I look at the actual script properties, I can see that this is a script source and these are all the properties associated to that particular script. Now if I come over here to connection managers, I can see any connection managers that are associated to the specific script. In this particular case, we have none. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So we have a script source. Then I'm going to go ahead and double click on my script transformation. And on the script transformation, what we can see here is that the name is actually a script transformation. I can have specific inputs. I can have specific outputs. Here, if I expand on my input one, these are my input columns, column one and column two. And then I look at my output columns, and these are my output columns as well. Let me go ahead and click OK here. Now I'm going to come over here and I am going to expand on other sources and other destinations. Now, when I'm looking at my common tasks that I have here under my design pane, I'm going to scroll down here just a little bit more. These are the destination types that I have and the sources that I have. But then I'm going to come up here a little bit, and what I'm looking for would be my common task here, which would actually be my script components. So what we can do is on our data flow, we can look at the specific script source. So if I double click this, I'm going to kind of scroll down here a little bit, and I can see that the script language is going to be a Visual C Sharp language 2010. If I want to look at this specific script, I can edit the script, and it may take a second or so for the script to actually be displayed. Now when we look at this particular script, we can see all of the libraries that it's called. It's using Microsoft SQL Server DTS, Pipeline Wrapper, Runtime Wrapper. It's also using the data client. So then I can scroll down here. And I can see that I've got output variables and also I have input variables. Basically, all we're doing here is we're bringing data in, modifying it, sending it out. And if I just kind of scroll down here, that's exactly what this particular script does. You'll notice within this particular script, everything that I have to it, I've got a component wrapper, a buffer wrapper. I can expand on references, I can expand on properties. So these are all the tools and utilities that we're going to use within that script. Also within that script, all of the script names will end with a .cs extension. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And when we do that, when we close this out, over here on the right-hand side, the Solution Explorer, we will ultimately see that these will go away here as well. So let me go ahead and close all of these here. And let me come down here to Properties, and I can see the actual specific properties for this particular script. I'm going to come over here to my Visual Studio, and you'll see here that I've got two windows open. Vista projects, and the other one is this demo that called it. So let me come back into that demo. Let me go ahead and cancel out of here. And I kind of want to walk you through exactly what this specific script does. We've got the script source, which is basically calling a program. 
we've got the script transformation. Now, if I double click on the script transformation, it's bringing data in for these input columns. So I have input column one and input column two. And then for my output columns, if I expand on output columns, I have output column zero. Let me go ahead and cancel out of this. Now, if I come down here and take a look at script destination, again, under that script destination, you can see these variables that I have. I have read only variables and I have read write variables. Then if I expand on input columns, I have input columns one and two. And then in this particular one, I only have input columns, again, column one and column two. Now, if I look at connection managers, this will identify the specific connection managers. And I can create my own connection managers or bring one in, whichever one I would see fit. So let me cancel out of here again. So if I come back over here to my control flow, basically what my control flow has done is I brought in a data flow task. And when I double clicked on that data flow task, it took me to these data flow tasks, which provide me a scripting source as well as a scripting destination. Now I'm gonna go back to my control flow. And then under my script task, I can identify the entry point, the read only variables, the write variables. I can expand on general. It tells me that this is a specific script task. And then I can look at expressions, if any. Now here I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. To see actually the values of those variables, I will go to SSIS and go to variables. And here we are defining my variables and we are defining them at the package level. In this particular case, the variable called myVar is a data type of string and the variable called results is a object defined variable. I'm gonna close out of here. So now if we back it up just a little bit, we have created this little scripting demo that calls this data flow task. The data flow task is using C Sharp to go out and create a scripting program. And we have a scripting program that's going to identify our source. We also have a scripting program that's going to do our transformation, and then a scripting program that's going to do our destination. So not only will SSIS support its own internal tools, but will also enable us to write our own little program and pretty much any program that we choose. But in this particular case, we're using the demo of C Sharp.